well, it's time to go pick up the old man. So I figured I would try to do some chit chatting as I go. And all. Um, I'm thinking about how does it help you to have a driver's license? Do you drive any better having a driver's license? Do you drive any better having a seatbelt on? Now, you can make up your own mind about the insurance. If you cannot afford it, I don't see why you should have it. But, you should be responsible in your driving. Not going across the yellow line. Not acting stupid. You can be a human being and not act stupid and get things done. You're supposed to be in this world but not of this world because of this world is enmity with God. So we don't want to be enmity with God. We want to be with God. And we have got a line coming here. Ugh. I want to work on being with Jesus, not work against. I figured that brown car would come on out, but he didn't. Oh well. Anyway. I want God. I don't want things of this world. <coughs> I think people ought to look at what their life is leading to. Their life is leading to nothing but cruel bondage. And already we're having to try to make brick without straw. <coughs> I mean, think about the brick. The brick is you live in the house. The brick is to cook in. The brick is to protect yourself. And none of this is, it, it's, it's stupid. The straw, or you could use the brick also for breaking your, letting them break your bike. <laughs> the straw is to start fire with, you know, to, Use straw to put on your roof so when it rains. Use straw for different things. You could think of all kinds of things that you could use straw with. So, what is it? It's coming to where we're back completely in Egypt. And in Egypt and all... They lived in complete bondage. We don't want to live in bondage. We want to be able to live the way God wants us to. To love our neighbor. To love each other as we would love ourselves. And if we can't love ourselves, how can we love others? And if we can't love others, how can we love Jesus? We can't. There's no way that we can love if we don't love ourselves. I'm not saying that you got to go out and buy big old diamond rings and all this other crap. Got to have a specific type of clothes or anything. Loving yourself is respecting yourself too. Like not going out and sleeping with just whoever, whatever. Thinking about what you are doing and all when you go to do it. 
think about, you know, what kind of repercussions am I going to have if I go to bed with this character I've only known for about five minutes? Not good. Not good. Oh, I think it's a pretty house there. Okay. The repercussions of other things, too, could be that they may kill you when you get it, when y'all are by yourself. This, that person could kill you. You could get a disease. You can look back and say, man, that dude is really stupid. What was I thinking? What was I doing to have, to, you know, to have sex with this guy that I don't even know? When you have sex with somebody, you are giving your soul and your mind and your ways away to somebody that's not... They're just going to trample on it. Because they don't really care. Find somebody that actually cares. If they care enough, then they will wait. They will wait. If they, they want to love you, marry you, fine. And that doesn't mean going out and getting a piece of paper from the government saying you're married. Say in your marriage, whenever you decide, hey, look, I'm going to stay with this person the rest of my life. And you two do it with God. Because with God, <coughs> you can survive it. And with God, y'all can go through anything together. And no matter what it is, y'all want to make it. And another thing, arguing, oh, I hate arguing, arguing is Satan saying I rule, so when y'all argue, you're, you, you're saying Satan rules, and you really don't want Satan to rule you, you want God to rule you. So just take everything with a grain of salt. With the way me and my old man, we always, it's just a thing. And we go on. We go on about whatever. It's just a thing. Because it's just something that happens. You know? That's like, uh, say somebody opens their car door, which has happened to me. And I'm sitting in my car park. And they open their car door and they hit my car. Why get out and argue and oh, I'm going to sue and all this crap? I mean, really, is it an accident? Could they have helped it? How bad did they do? What did they do to your car to make it bad? Or anything. Look, it's the car. You own it. It don't own you. And with, I'm to tell you, with the... The uh, um, title that you have, you don't own it. A title on the car, you gave it over to the government. So you gave it away. The title to this thing, I gave it away to the government. But, keep in mind, property is nine-tenths of the law. And I have it in my possession. It is mine, not the government's. So, it belongs to me. Does not belong to the government. I don't care how you want to look at it. It's in my possession. But, it's like, I own it. You're not going to damage it the car you don't the car don't own you you act like it does 
The car does not own you. If it owns you, then it will tell you what to do. Not you tell it. It's like driving down the road. You're the one that steers it. So you got to steer your life in the way you want to go. And if you want to go out there and be stupid and ignorant and do your life the way, however you want to do it, go for it. But I'm not going to let this car tell me what I need to do, what I don't need to do. That's like when I haul stuff, I'll open my trunk and throw whatever in there. I had an 89 Ford Mustang, loved that car. I hauled wood in and I hauled whatever I, I did whatever I wanted to do. I loved that car. And I owned it, it did not own me. But it's gone now. There's nothing I can do about it. But I'm happy with what I've got now. God gave me another car, gave me the money to get another car. And it has really been good. Well, I will talk to you all later. I'm at my destination.